I felt a strong pull, a call to help in Africa. I was familiar with the medical facilities in Sierra Leone. I understood the people and their culture. So I brought a ticket in September 2014. But six or eight weeks later, I received in the mail a set of eye instruments and a book, How To, How To Do Cataract Surgery. We practiced on cow and pig eyes provided by the local butcher. Subsequently, we did surgery that was successful for the patients who were willing to trust a general, but not an eye surgeon. The floodgates were opened. Can you tell us a little bit about the Lowell and Ruth Guest Eye Hospital and how that started? Well, the eye hospital at Kissy in Freetown is a continuation of the eye program that had uh, been carried on for eight years up country. Uh, they made available $75,000 to build uh, the hospital, but uh, that didn't build very much of it. So what I did was I wrote a letter addressed to 8,000 AAO members <laughs> telling them about the need in Africa and asked if any wanted to contribute one of their incomes from one case and they did, and the hospital was built. Now the Lowell and Ruth Guest Eye Hospital is one of the major centers for eye care and systemic health of Ebola survivors. Did you ever foresee that the Lowell and Ruth Guest Eye Hospital have this impact? Uh, we were only intending to uh, meet the eye care needs until other organizations like the government and others would take over but uh, there was never that time when we weren't able to make a contribution because we were having board certified ophthalmologists visiting and covering most of the months of the, of the years uh, with their visits so uh, they never let Casey Eye Hospital off the hook they never let it die can you tell us about the letter you wrote to the World Health Organization and Doctors Without Borders? February the 11th, I saw three doctors that uh, Doctors Without Borders had referred to to us at Kissy. All three had the same findings, com almost complete posterosnickia and the chronic erratic precipitates and so on. I, I simply suggested that it might be a a part, the part of wisdom to give uh, some steroid drops to help and then to include some midriatic. After that visit, I wrote a letter expressing appreciation for what they were doing and, and included in the letter a protocol for possible help for those eyes that were involved and especially for those that did survive that they'd have a better chance for vision. It was a wake-up call to the world that an epidemic in Africa could become pandemic and disperse disease and death to other continents. And there is a saying, outbreaks are inevitable, pandemics are optional. All countries can be vulnerable to remote places because of airplanes circling the globe today. It prompted governments half a continent away to martial forces to assist in fighting and containing the deadly viral hemorrhagic disease. Hundreds of organizations and individuals provided medicines and Ebola supplies. Millions of dollars were donated not only by governments and international agencies, but also by individual people. Thousands of volunteers entered the fray with their gifts and skills, 
all lives mattered. The 500 health workers who died received the best care, but only the best care available in one of the poorest countries of the world. It was not possible to fly all 800 infected health care workers, let alone the other 28,000 who contracted Ebola, of which over 11,300 died. Access to treatment was a heart-wrenching, soul-searching, and profoundly troubling question. As I look back on January and February, I realized that I had never lived for two months in such a high level of adrenaline. On March 4th, I settled back into the plane seat and wended my way back to my primary home in Alexandria, Minnesota, crossing the ocean for the 186th time. It was a spiritual experience. I have never been more dependent on God's grace or experienced more highly the joy of ministering in the name of my Savior and Lord. Why did I do it? Like Paul in 1 Corinthians 9.23, all this I do for the gospel's sake in order to share in its blessing. We face a humanity too precious to neglect. We know a remedy for the ills of the world too wonderful to withhold. We have a savior too glorious to hide. My Ebola sojourn was an adventure too thrilling to miss.